Welcome back to Big Country Politics on KTAB. Well, hello and welcome to this week's Sunday conversation here on Big Country Politics. I am Manny Diaz. This week our special guest is a good friend of mine, Mr. Paul Beal. He is uh, public relations and business development representing Taylor Telecom. Uh, Paul, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Well, you are, uh, this has been a conversation that, you know, I've had with the Chamber of Commerce when it comes to rural broadband internet. And, you know, coming from, you know, San Angelo and the Concho Valley, I saw this so much where there was such a major issue there. Uh, we're going to unpack all that today because you have some very good insight on all that. Uh, but first and foremost, as we kind of uh, begin this, tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience in the broadband industry. Uh, I've been in telecom for about 33 years. Uh, started out as a long distance provider and then evolved into, uh, and that was way before even internet was thought of, you know, then mm. evolved into dial up internet, DSL internet, and now broadband with fiber optics and been doing that for about 35 years now. Earlier this month, you and your group from Taylor Telecom hosted a watch party to discuss broadband in rural communities. Smart communities and conversation is what it was called. A lot was discussed. What were some of the main points that could pertain to us locally? So we have several areas in our uh, in our suburban area that are smart rural communities. We have Tuscola, we have Buffalo Gap, and also Holly, and the surrounding areas around there. And so the National Broadband Association has designated those areas as top quality providers in those areas. And so we're the top quality provider in those areas. So they come out and test it and we qualified for that. Wow. And so that helps Holly, Holly, and, um, uh, and, uh, Holly and Tuscola and Buffalo Gap with economic development. Mm. And so they've been able to take this logo and put it on their websites and help promote businesses to come in. Uh, it's more and more demand has been on the internet. You know, it's like, you know, back before, you know, it's almost, you, you couldn't run a business without having certain things. Well, now it's, uh, now it's broadband and good quality broadband is, is a way for them to promote their cities and get economic development. We'll get into the economics of this because, I mean, like you said, I mean, that is a main thing. You know, you used to be, you couldn't operate without a telephone line. Now, well, it's the internet. Um, with all that said, where do we stand in Abilene and the big country when it comes to accessibility to high-speed broadband? We have been working on that for quite some time now in our serving areas. Uh, we're doing quite well with that. We're about 90%. Uh, by the end of next year, we sh should be right around 90% uh, complete with our our broadband. And that's and after that, you know, probably next three or four years after that, we should be at 100%. You know, where every area should have uh, broadband in our area. Uh, there's some areas that are lacking, like Anson and Hamlin. I mean, they're having a big struggle with that right now, I mean, and it's hurting their cities drastically. It, and, you know, there's a question, you know, that we, we were talking before we came on. You know, do you feel from, you know, y'all's perspective that this, the big country is getting served, the majority of it is, is, is getting served with rural broadband internet? Uh, there's areas that, that are, are doing quite well. And so those areas we've been serving for 70 years with phone service. And so we've evolved that into broadband and putting uh, fiber into those areas. And those areas are served real well, but there's some areas that, that have just missed the boat. I and mean, just because of the providers that were in those areas that were allocated for providing phone service in those areas, haven't stepped up to the plate and actually provide fiber in those areas just because mm -hmm. of the, the return on investment is very thin. You know, when you only have a, several hundred people and you're putting 200, you know, about two or three million dollars into a project, the return on investment's not quite enough for them to be able to put that in. Sure. Well, I know this is this is a kind of a question that segues into that. And, you know, I think we can probably, we, we, we probably can figure out the answer, but there's probably a little bit more to it. But how much different is broadband internet from the highly populated areas of DFW, the greater Houston area, San Antonio, Austin, what have you, uh, to places like Abilene and the big country? I think uh, in Abilene itself, you know, I think they're doing a pretty good job with that. The problem is, you know, the, the more demand there is on the broad broadband, the harder it is for, um, for companies to keep up with this, uh, the, the demand for it because they're limited on the bandwidth that they're providing to the customers. And so a lot of times they're cutting back and they have to buy internet services also. And so the less that they can get by with, the, the more profit that they can make. And that's where we try to do it a little bit differently. We have a lot of um, a bigger um, variety of bandwidth available for those customers. And so when you get on at night or whenever it is, you'll be able to get the speeds that we promised you. And so there's a big bottleneck, you know, and it's just, 
you know, they're, they're out to make a profit and we're a co-op and so we look at things a little bit differently. Sure, and Taylor Telecom, you guys more or less service the outer areas of Abilene, certainly. We do, we do have certain areas in Abilene that we cover, but mainly uh, like in Hawley and Buffalo Gap and Tuscola, those are kind of the main areas and we cover a lot of areas, a lot of really rural areas around those areas also mm -hmm. that are very hard to get, get a hold of. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, coming up, more with Paul Beal as we discuss um, how broadband impacts business in Abilene and the big country. Certainly, new business. That more right here on Big Country Politics. Welcome back to Big Country Politics on KTAB. Well, welcome back to Big Country Politics. This is our Sunday conversation. I'm Manny Diaz. This week, our special guest is Paul Beal. He is a representative from Taylor Telecom, public relations, business development. Uh, Paul, the, the, the Development Corporation of Abilene, the DCOA, plays a major role in developing business in Abilene. Uh, but how much are groups like Taylor Telecom part of that conversation, certainly down the stretch, uh, because, you know, as we know, without adequate internet speeds, business really can't thrive. A couple of years ago, we had a, a meeting with Misty Mayo and the Development Corporation, and one of their big concerns is broadband. I mean, because there's broadband available in some of the areas that they they have, like at Five Points, for instance, but the quality of service is just not quite there for for maintaining a manufacturing business because a lot of it is remote, you know, and so they're having to remote in with, through the internet in order to be able to operate their equipment. And so a lot of the companies out there were complaining about that. And so we were about 10 miles away. And so we decided to go ahead and uh, bite the bullet and bring it into Five Points. And so everywhere in the Five Points area, they provide, have a company that comes in for, for um, manufacturing or whatever it may be, we have the br a bandwidth there available for them. Mm -hmm. And we also looked at Great Lakes Cheese as another company that we provided it for. It was a little bit outside of our area, but we wanted to provide that for them because of the quality of service is so important to us and economic development is very important to Taylor Telecom also. Definitely. Well, you know, we'd also, you'd also mention, you know, the challenges, you know, because it isn't just, you know, digging a hole in the ground. You're having to basically be strategic with things and yet you guys are running into some of these things. Tell us about the challenges of uh, putting fiber in the ground and certainly what that looks like. There's uh, two different options. One, we could hang it on the poles or we could put it in the ground. We chose to put it in the ground just because of the long term. It's going to be there long term. It doesn't have the weathering effects that it does if it's on the poles or you don't have to worry about hunters shooting it you know, and causing problems with that. So we do have problems occasionally with somebody cutting the fiber, but it can be uh, rerouted very easily through our, uh, through our network. So bearing it's a lot more expensive, but long term it's a lot better way to do it especially going through an area where there's a lot of rock. We did Hamby many years ago, and there's a lot of rock out there, and the cost of doing that was, was pretty extensive. But uh, the benefits long-term are, are definitely there. Certainly. Well, speaking of cost, you know, the, the federal government uh, said last year that they're going to divvy up roughly $350 billion to dedicate to, to broadband internet in the country. 3.3 .3 is going to the state of Texas, the most allocated to any state in the, in, 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 in the U.S. Tell me, I mean, this is the billion dollar question here. How much could we see of that here in the big country? That is, a, that is the big question because we, it's still being determined. Um, there's a broadband office in Austin that's is trying to figure out, you know, where, where that's going to lay. And so there's going to be criteria. Right now, it looks like if you have 100 by 30 bandwidth in your area, you may not qualify, which uh, if it's your home or, or for my home, I mean, we're running, I don't do a whole lot of internet, but we're running maybe 250 to 300K, uh, you know, megabits right now, you know, through that, just because of smart devices and things like that. So I really don't know if even 130 is going to be enough to, uh, it's going to leave a lot of people out of the equation because there are certain areas that might be able to get 130 maybe and uh, it's going to be up to deciding all that and so that's going to be the big question is where the money is actually going to end up going it's yet to be determined there's a lot of areas around abilene ones that we've uh, looked at you know that definitely need it that we have meetings with is jones county mm -hmm. is a big area um, that doesn't have broadband and it's very expensive to bring it out there. We provide uh, services to Hawley, but we stop there and, you know, there's Anson and also uh, Hamlin. And so those areas are being crushed, you know, by economic development because who wants to put a manufacturing company there 
if there's no, and then also a hospital also. Mm -hmm. And so it's affecting medical, it's affecting all types of economic development in those areas. If they don't get the speech that they need, I don't know what's gonna happen to them. Well, 3.3 .3 billion, I mean, for, I guess, if to, to go out to the state of Texas, that isn't, when you really think about it, it's not a whole lot uh, to really ser service the needs because, I mean, if you look at the panhandle, that's it probably gets more remote up there uh, than here in, in Abilene in the big country. Um, how, how do, I guess, how, how, do, uh, you, how does a company like Taylor Telecom supplement that, you know, even if they're just getting a small portion of money from, from the federal government in the state of Texas? Yes, we're gonna have to get creative on the way we do things. And so maybe it's not all broad, maybe it's all not fiber, maybe certain areas may have to be addressed in a different way. And so that's some technology that we're looking at and have been testing around, playing with a little bit, because we do realize that, you know, there's going to be some areas that really need that bandwidth that, mm -hmm. that fiber optics is just not going to be able to do it just because of the cost involved in doing it. Wow. So, I mean, obviously it's one thing if, you know, if a company wants to be there, but it also has to do with the population of a, of a certain area, which, you know, I mean, God bless the folks out in Hamlin and the, and the Fighting Pied Pipers and Anson, but it's it's not what it used to be. Exactly. So, anywho, well, Paul, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate your insight. Thanks for allowing me to be here. You bet. All right, for Paul Beal from Taylor Telecom, I am Manny Diaz. This has been another Sunday conversation right here on Big Country Politics. We'll see you next time. God bless. <laughs>